In this video you'll see my top 20 plot revealing and truth unveiling moments. Number 20. Glenn Gary. Glenn Ross. One of my favorite movies and one you must watch if you appreciate fine art. In this scene, office manager John Williamson realizes that it was salesman Shelley Levine who stole the leads after he slipped and said something stupid. If you're gonna make something up, John, be sure that it helps or keep your mouth shut. How do you know I made it up? What? How do you know I made it up? Number 19. The Majestic. After Peter had lost his memory, found himself in a small town where everyone mistook him for the long lost Luke, Peter restores his memory again after he'd finally accepted and embraced the idea of being Luke. Come on, Kelly. This time, I'll make sure you're dead. Taste my steel, you dog. Taste my steel, you dog. Oh, Roland. Oh, Emily. Oh, shit. <laughs> Number 18. Catch the few. Him. FBI agent Carl Handready realizes that the guy he just let go isn't really Secret Service and that he is, in fact, the suspect he was chasing for months. gotta be painful. Number 17. The Shawshank Redemption. Assuming you haven't already watched it several times, it's the iconic moment where corrupt warden Norton finds the hole in the wall and the fact that Andy's escape was only the half of it. Roy Waller is a scam artist who gets backstabbed by his partner in crime and his daughter who turns out to be not really his daughter and that it was all just a big plot to find his hidden cash. That's how Roy realized that he's been double scammed. If it makes any difference, you're the best I ever saw. I'd never find a better partner. And now I won't have to. I love you, man. Frank. Enjoy the gift. You were pregnant. You were pregnant. You were. You were pregnant. I lost it. <laughs> Number 15. Wanted. Still with the backstabbing, only this one is too painful to imagine. Wesley Gibson gets tempted, recruited, and deluded by a group of assassins who'll train him for the sole purpose of making him kill his own father. In this scene, he gets to know that the man he just killed is, in fact, his father. You're my son. What are you saying to me? Why did you make me do this? Because you are the only person he wouldn't kill. Number 14. The Illusionist. Inspector realizes that he'd been fooled and used in a very special magic trick and that nothing really was what it seemed. Number 13. The Prestige. Robert Angier is a magician who went above and beyond to figure out and beat his rival magician's big trick. In the process, he does some unspeakable acts of pure evil that ended up with him framing his rival magician for murder and getting him hanged. In this scene, he realizes as he gets ultimately defeated that the trick was way simpler than he thought. <laughs> Number 14. 
Number 12. The Usual Suspects Detective Dave Koyan figures out that he wasn't remotely as smart as he thought he was after realizing that he was fed an enormous amount of bullshit by a man who turned out to be the devil who's behind the whole thing, only he figures that out a little bit later than he should have. The Departed. Undercover cop Billy Costigan finds out as he is finally that close to getting his identity back as a cop that the officer who's processing his file is in fact a rat for the criminal organization that he had infiltrated. Number 10. Donnie Brasco This time, it's the other way around. Wise guy Lefty gets his doubts confirmed that his best friend, the man he brought in and vouched for, is an FBI agent. You've known this guy as Donnie Brasco. That's not his real name. Truth is, he's been an FBI agent all along. You can contact me here if you want to talk. Number 9. Mystic River. That one is really depressive. Jimmy finds out that his childhood friend Dave wasn't the one who killed his daughter after he'd already killed him for it. Great movie that I'll never watch again. We got him, Jim. Right who? Katie's killers. Got him cold. They just confessed a couple hours ago. No doubt. Thanks for finding my daughter's killer, Sean. If only you'd been a little faster. Number 8. Primal Fear Right after getting him off the hook of a double homicide on grounds of multiple personality disorder, lawyer Martin Vale finds out that his client Aaron Stampler has only one personality and that he was fooling him from day one. Tell Miss Venable, I'm sorry. Tell her I hope her neck is, is okay. What did you just say? How do you know about her neck? I was gonna let it go. You was looking so happy just now, I was thinking, mm, uh, but to tell you the truth, I'm glad you figured it. Cause I have been dying to tell you. <laughs> You're good. You are really good. So there never, there never was a Roy. There never was an Aaron counselor. Number 7. Casino Royale. After falling too deep in love with Vesper that he wanted to quit being 007 to spend his life with her, James Bond gets a call from M which made him realize that Vesper has been the traitor all along. Right now I have a lovely man from the treasury here, wondering if you're ever going to deposit the winnings. That's a shame. I didn't think they'd miss it. Yes. Well, I tell them not to worry. So you'll be depositing it today? On my way to the bank right now. Number 6. Fight Club. Unlike Primal Fear, Edward Norton's character does have an actual personality disorder. I'm not supposed to talk about it, so we'll just jump to the part when he finally finds out that he is Tyler and Tyler is him. Who do you think I am? You're Mr. Durden. You're the one who gave me this. Please return your seat backs to their full, upright, and locked position. Do 
You got it. No. Do not fuck with us! Say it. Because we're the same person. That's right. Number five. Shutter Island. Still with the deep psychological issues, only this one is a little heavier. After creating a whole separate reality for himself where he is still a US Marshal, investigating the disappearance of a patient who escaped from a seemingly shady mental hospital, and after trolling the audience for over 90 minutes, Teddy Daniels gets confronted with his truth and actual reality. Here is how Teddy processes the fact that he is Andrew. Here it is. Your name is Andrew Ladis, the 67th patient at Ashcliffe. He's you, Andrew. Bullshit. You were committed here by court order 24 months ago. Your crime is terrible, one you can't forgive yourself for, so you invented another self. Four, the Truman Show. Truman is not delusional, he's not insane, his whole life has been a gigantic conspiracy, carried out by literally everyone he'd ever seen. But unlike most movies, Truman notices, suspects, and fully realizes that there is something going on way before the end of the movie. In those key moments, you'll see how Truman came to realize what was going on in his world. Dad? <laughs> Oh, hey, what are you doing? Okay, he's making his turn on to Lancaster Square. <laughs> oh my god, he knew he would mail it. S something's wrong. Uh, change frequencies. Thank you for your help. You're welcome, Truman. Number three, The Sixth Sense. In this movie, the protagonist, Dr. Malcolm Crowe, doesn't really find anything shocking in his life. Instead, he finds out that he has no life. Literally. After having a number of meetings with a kid who sees the ghosts of dead people, Malcolm Crowe finally realizes that he's been dead since the beginning of the movie. Number two, seven. After finally arresting a serial killer who uses the seven deadly sins as his motives, Detective David Mills finds out in the most gruesome way possible that he'd been the final target in the killer's list for the sin rap. Here's how David Mills processed what he just learned. What the fuck's he talking about? Give me your gun. What's going on over there? Put the gun. I down. saw you with the box. What was in the box? Because I envy your normal life. Put the gun down, David. It seems that envy is my sin. No, what's in the box? Not no! You just throw it all away, you know? No! Number one, The Godfather 2. Michael Corleone survives an assassination attempt in his own home, which meant that there is a traitor in the family. In his initial reaction, Michael suspected everyone except for Tom Hagen and his harmless brother Fredo. After a few moves, Michael figures out that Hyman Roth, his business partner, was behind the assassination attempt, and that his brother Fredo, who denied that he'd ever met Hyman Roth, nor his assistant Johnny Ola, has actually more than just met them both. Old man Roth had never come here, but old Johnny knows these places like the back of his hand. Now watch him, he's gonna break the cracker with us. Break a cracker? I would've seen him break a brick. <laughs> he could knock down a building. 50 bucks, right, Pat? Yeah, I owe you 50. All right. Huh? Did you make use of that one? time.